tone, state, followed by the pound sign. Presentation mode is now disabled. Presentation mode is now enabled.
Presentation mode is now disabled. Your call has been put on hold. Please stay online or call later. Aapka call hold par rakha gaya hai. Kripya line par bane rahein. Ya kuch deer baad sampark kare. Your call has been put on hold. Please. Hi everybody. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Here now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but. Okay. So I'll, yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I will. I will mute all your lines, and if you still have issues, please let me know. Because if I don't mute, there will be a lot of background noise. Okay. So I'm all right. Presentation mode is now enabled. Um. Hi. Uh, this is Siddhu Yavagel, your host for the day. Can you hear me? If no, please ping on the uh, chat. Okay, I got lot of confirmation, so I'll. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Okay. 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 Uh, as I'm your host for the day, my name is Siddhu Yavagel, and. Uh, today's topic is auto memory settings for optimization and scalability before we start we'll have some of the housekeeping tips for today's presentation uh, as i told i have muted all your lines and if there is uh, since there's lot of background noise uh, you uh, i'll be open up the lines for the question and answer at the end of the presentation please feel free to post your queries on the chatter and this session will be recorded and this will be available on youtube for your reference later a survey link will be sent to all of you by end of the presentation i request all of you to please fill the survey now i will hand it over to deepa joshi hi everyone after getting introduced to the webinar topic let's get started I would discuss about 
memory allocation for the power center session buffer memory cache memory memory for concurrent sessions and sessions with partitions few examples which can prove auto settings do not always give optimum results some important basic tips to improve the session performance keeping memory optimization and scalability of power center application intact on your servers during our demo we will see allocation of dtm buffer memory and cache memory with the help of session log how the cache memory is divided among different transformations also the role of performance counter in tuning the cache size this will be followed by a q and a session before understanding the auto memory settings and their role in optimization and scalability let's try to understand what are these terms and how they are different optimization is the process of making an existing task more efficient while doing the same operations this can be related to the process of improving the session performance with respect to power center there are external and internal factors such as database network system configuration cpu physical memory etc which need to be considered tweaking memory settings plays a major role in finding the best possible performance for a session scalability is the ability of the system to handle growing number of tasks in a capable manner or its ability to be enlarged to accommodate that growth in short scope for your future tasks or operation with respect to power center application we need to think of the anticipated or unanticipated data in the future before we do the maximum optimization for the existing session we can add new resources can be more memory or cpu to accommodate the new session to perform more complex operations which is called scale up or we may add more servers or nodes to the existing application to distribute the load which is called scale out keeping these two aspects in mind let's start today's webinar discussions as per the agenda what is a power center session a task with a set of instructions that tells the integration service how and when to move the data from sources to targets to run a session you must first create a workflow to contain the session task the data movement is based on the workflow and mapping metadata stored in the repository it is basically the etl operation there are certain session parameters based on which the total memory for a session is calculated the total memory allocated for a session is the sum of data transformation manager that is dtm buffer memory and the transformation cache memory the pictorial view of a session and its memory attributes is as shown here the integration service launches the data transformation manager that is dtm the dtm starts the reader transformation and writer threads dtm buffer is responsible for the data movement from source to the target through transformation the reader transformation and writer threads use the available blocks for the data transfer else they need to wait until the blocks are freed by any of the operation the transformation cache holds the transformation data to apply the transformation logic and does the processing
The DTM buffer memory comprises of DTM buffer size and default buffer block size. The cache memory is calculated based on values of maximum memory allowed for auto memory attributes and maximum percentage of total memory allowed for auto memory attributes for the transformations whose data and index cache size is set to auto. The DTM buffer size and the default block size are independent of the two auto memory attributes. The absolute value or the percentage value which sets the maximum limit for the cache memory. The memory attributes are for the transformation cache. You will find the auto memory attributes in the properties and config object tab when you open the session. Or you can see all of them in the memory properties under the mapping tab of the session. Let's try to understand each one of them briefly. The DTM buffer size and the default block size are independent of two memory attributes. The total buffer memory allocated to a session specified in bytes is called DTM buffer size. The integration service divides buffer memory into buffer blocks. Each block can hold one or more rows of data. Ideally, there will be at least one row per block. The DTM buffer size and the default buffer block size attributes can be set to auto or hard-coded with numeric values. The default buffer block size is 64 KB. Change in DTM buffer size and block size is directly related to how much data is processed in one block. Let's get to know how are these values calculated. Buffer memory calculation is based on certain aspects and they are listed as shown. Add the precisions of all the columns of a source and target instances individually. The largest precision determines the row size. This row size is used to calculate the buffer block size used in the session. The total precision represents the total bytes needed to move the largest row of data. For example, when you import a source table with six columns, each having a precision of 256, the total precision is 256 multiplied by 6 that is 1536, to find out the number of rows that would be accommodated in a buffer block, divide the block size by the total precision. We get around 41 rows in this case. You may say that my actual data may not come as a precision of 256 always, so the size of the row would be less. So will the block size vary depending on the size of the row? No. 41 rows would be processed irrespective of the actual length of the input row. In case of multibyte data, the number of rows may vary since they occupy more space. The calculation here is based on the ASCII mode. A mapping that contains large number of sources and targets may require additional buffer blocks. The integration service allocates at least two blocks for each source and target partition. So the number of blocks increase with partition. The DTM requires additional memory to perform some features like row error logging or deadlock recovery. Power center will hold all the records in blocks until a commit is issued when you have enabled deadlock retry. In other scenarios, we do not hold the blocks. The blocks will be freed once the records in the block have been executed to the target. 
In case of row level error logging, only one row is passed from block to block. Please note, the algorithm for the calculation is proprietary to Informatica and hence cannot be modified. These are just some of the areas where a user has some control to adjust the DTM buffer values. The numbers shown here are just examples of default DTM buffer size and DTM block size. The integration service interprets the number as so many bytes append KB, MB, or GB to the value to specify other units, or you can leave it as auto. Some of the guidelines to keep in mind when you specify values for DTM buffer and block size. If you set the buffer block size smaller than the largest row of size, the integration service increases the block size to match the row size at runtime. Block size is the size of the largest row or 64 KB, whichever is larger. While specifying the block size, make sure the buffer size at least 10 times the block size, else um. How about now? Is it still breaking? Uh, hello? Uh, hi. Uh, is it still breaking? Oh, hello, hello. Oh, is that clear now? Yes. Uh, I see a lot of S's in the chat, so I'll ask Deepa to go ahead. Yes, Deepa, go ahead. While specifying the block size, make sure Buffer size at least 10 times the block size. Else, you will see this error while assigning itself in the session properties. Ensure that buffer block is able to accommodate maximum possible rows. At least 100 unless your row size is unusually huge. In the earlier example, we saw 41 rows were processed in one block. You can increase the number of rows by adjusting the precision or the buffer values. There can be some. Uh, sure. Uh, we will restart the uh, guidelines for DTM buffer and block size slides from the beginning. If you set the buffer block size smaller than the largest row size, the integration service increases the block size to match the row size at runtime. Block size is the size of the largest row or 64 KB, whichever is larger. While specifying the block size, make sure the buffer size is at least 10 times the block size, else you will see this error while assigning itself in the session properties. Ensure that buffer block is able to accommodate maximum possible rows, at least 100 unless your row size is unusually huge. In the earlier example, we saw 41 rows were processed in one block. You can increase the number of rows by adjusting the precision or the buffer values. There can be some padding or internal calculations while finding out the row size at runtime. If the available memory blocks for the session 
are less, then either you increase the DTM buffer size or decrease the block size. In case of large binary objects, increase the buffer size. The integration service allocates cache memory for XML targets, aggregator, joiner, lookup, rank, and sorter transformation whose data and index cache sizes are set to auto. It is based on the values specified for the auto memory settings in the form of absolute value or as a percentage. The integration service stores key values in the index cache and output values in the data cache. When any of the auto memory attributes is set to zero, auto memory allocation is disabled. Default values of auto memory attributes are as shown. 512 MB for maximum memory allowed for auto memory attributes and 5% for the maximum percentage of total memory allowed for auto memory attributes. When the cache memory of the transformations is set to auto, the integration service uses the lesser of these two auto memory attribute values and sets it as the maximum memory limit. You may have a question, why there are two options provided for the cache memory? Because the available memory varies on the system due to other applications or system processes running on the same machine at a given point of time. The integration service bases the percentage value on the total memory during the run time. Consider an integration service running on a machine with 20 GB of total memory then the maximum memory allowed for auto memory attributes is 512 MB and 5% 5 of 20 GB is 1024 MB. 512 MB is the minimum of the two. The integration service divides the 512 MB of allocated memory among the index and data cache of all the caching transformations. If any of the maximum memory attributes is set to zero, auto calculations are disabled. Default 1 MB is calculated for the index and 2 MB for the data cache. The integration service can increase this value if required at runtime. You can use any of these methods to specify the cache memory size. A cache calculator use auto memory to specify a maximum limit on the cache size or configure a specific numeric value for the cache size. The cache size requirements for a transformation may change when the inputs to the transformation change. Monitor the cache sizes in the session logs on a regular basis to help us tune the cache size manually. An example of a cache calculator. The cache calculator requires different inputs for each transformation. To calculate the cache size of an aggregator transformation, you supply the number of groups. For lookup, you supply the number of input rows with unique keys. You can configure auto for the index and data cache size in the transformation properties or on the mapping tab of the session properties. The cache size specified in the session properties overrides the value set in the transformation properties. If more data is 
accommodated in the memory, it is processed faster. The data spills over to the disk if all the processing cannot be done in memory. Hence, having optimal direct cache directory becomes important. Default directory is $PM cache directory. For example, you have bookings data for airlines for different regions across the globe. You have to do the operations of comparing the bookings for India and say London multiple times. So your design should be in such a way that India and London bookings data can entirely be processed in memory. You can split your mapping, create temporary tables to use as a cached lookup storing the booking data which are used frequently. Keep a tab on the connected input-output ports and output-only ports. For example, try to remove all unnecessary ports from lookup, creating a lookup override to fetch only those records which are actually required to perform lookup. ASCII mode of integration service processes the data in one byte, whereas in Unicode mode, it uses two bytes for each character. The most important difference in a 64-bit computing from a software perspective is the ability of an application to use more memory than was possible in 32-bit environment. 32-bit world can only address 4 gigabytes of RAM while allowing up to only 2 gigabytes of RAM for any given application. In contrast, a 64-bit processor provides about few million gigabytes. This enables power center in a 64-bit environment to perform complex in-memory processing, eliminating the costly disk I.O. It gives a higher throughput and uses less CPUs to perform the same task compared to a 32-bit environment. I will go back to the slide 17 after the end of this presentation, uh, definitely. So let's continue the momentum. And when we have a question and session, uh, at the time we can go back. I, I, I am keeping tab on the chat. Thank you so much. Right. Increasing the number of partitions allows the integration service to create multiple connections to sources and targets and processes the data concurrently. No doubt, this increases the session performance, but requires more memory. When partition is enabled on a session with auto DTM buffer size, the memory required will be multiplied by n partitions, whereas when memory when configured manually, it gets shared across all partitions. Hence, increase the DTM buffer size to at least n times the value for the session with one partition. Parallel sessions also require more system memory. For an example, you create four partitions in a session with an aggregator transformation you determine that an aggregator transformation requires 400 MB of memory for the data cache. Configure 100 MB for data cache size for an aggregator transformation. When you run the session, the integration service allocates 100 MB for each partition using a total of 400 MB for the aggregator transformation. If you have multiple sessions running in parallel on a system which has a single CPU, then it's not a true parallelism, since they all share the same CPU, hence have multiple CPUs. Use 
power center grid setup and distribute the session processes to different nodes where there is enough memory available. The integration service may use cache partitioning for the aggregator, joiner, lookup, rank, and sorter transformations applicable only under certain conditions. It creates a separate cache for each partition and allocates the configured cache size to each partition. The integration service stores different data in each cache where each cache contains only the rows needed by that partition. As a result, the integration service requires only a portion of total cache memory for each partition. To configure the memory requirements for a transformation with cache partitioning, calculate the total requirements for the transformation and divide by the number of partitions. In case of heavy load for the cache transformation, configure different file systems on your, or for your each partition. This will ensure seamless usage of the disk parallelly by all the partitions for reading and writing the data without facing any bottleneck. Parallel sessions normally is a matter of another process claiming the same resources. Hence, increase the resources on the system. I will give certain scenarios as examples where data and index cache are set as auto, and you need to change them to manual way of tuning. There are two lookups in a mapping. One processes 10 million rows and the other 10,000 rows. Say lookup one may get data cache as 500 MB and the index cache as 250 MB. And lookup two will also get the same values assigned irrespective of the number of lookup rows. There will be a waste of memory in this case if one of the lookups is smaller. Cache calculation happens each time the session runs, and there is no averaging over time. I would say auto option needs to be used when you do not bother about the allocation nor about tuning any transformation. It is not intelligent enough to consider the memory of av available memory for other tasks or the data load. Let's see another scenario. You have 1 GB memory available, but you see that only 500 MB is allocated for the cache. Say you assign 800 MB, but make sure the data is at least 800 MB. You have 500 MB memory available, but you see that 1 GB is calculated for the cache. If you configure the cache size and it is not enough to process the transformation in memory, the integration service pages the information to cache files, which are temporary files on the disk, to process the rest of the transformation data. The amount of memory you configure depends on how much memory cache and disk cache you want to use. Part of the data is processed in memory and the rest is spilled to the disk. The performance may reduce as data needs to be swapped in and out from the disk for processing. You see cache files being created during the session run in the specified cache directory even though all the records have been processed in memory. Cache files are created on the disk regardless of memory availability because there is no way to know when the system will run out of memory. They will not have data unless specified as persistent 
or will not remain on the disk if incremental aggregation is used. However, these files are used only when the main memory is exhausted. The other cache files would get deleted at the end of a successful session completion. You can see only joiner data cache having the data in the example shown. There is no formula for optimal DTM buffer size. You need to monitor the behavior, see the session log statistics, and then set the values for the optimal use using a trial and error method. It is basically an iterative process. Let's see different ways in which DTM buffer memory and cache memory can be tuned. I am not covering each transformation cache and methods in detail. The points are very generic. Have the metadata of sources and targets in sync with the database. Since the block size and number of blocks depend on the precision of sources and targets, reduce the precision of the ports if the expected data length is less. Do not keep large values for the ports. And also, see if the number of sources and target instances can be reduced. There is always an overhead involved in moving data among transformations. Hence, reduce them wherever possible in the mapping. Commit point at the target depends on the commit interval and the number of rows processed per DTM buffer block. Depending on the use case, like normal load or bulk load, either decrease or increase the commit interval so that the number of round trips to the database reduces. Eliminate transformation errors and data rejects. First, make it work, then make it faster. You may want to set stop on errors to one to avoid row error logging, or have a rotor or some logic to push the wrong data to a target which is faster than the row level error logging. Informatica recommends you allocate not more than 1 GB for the DTM buffer memory. While tuning the cache transformations, usually lookup gets the first preference. When you cache a lookup, we fire the lookup query to the database and then bring in the entire set of data from the database to the cache file directory. Informatica then uses this data whenever this particular lookup is called. By doing this, Informatica saves time and effort to go back to the database every time the lookup is called. How often the lookup is called depends on the number of records coming in from the source. If the number of records coming from the source comparatively much lesser than the number of records present in the lookup table, then you should consider using uncached lookup. If the lookup table is small, it's generally a good idea to cache the lookup table. Is it back now? Hey, everybody, is it back now, the voice? Oh, I hear more yeses, and we'll go ahead. Can you hear me now? Hello. Hello. Can you hear us now? Hello. Can you hear us now? Okay. Now I see a lot of S's and we are going ahead.
Use sorted input option whenever possible. For example, use of sorted input in joiner enables the transformation following the joiner start receiving the data nearly immediately and do not have to wait until all the data were sorted and joined in the joiner transformation. Also, sorted input option allows a smaller cache size. Use filters, rotors, etc. to reduce the rows in the pipeline, thereby for caching. Having the cache directory local to the power center server reduces the network latency and other external factors and will have faster access to the files. This will be valid if the recovery is not enabled as the persisted cache files will not be accessible by other nodes. Cache directly should never run out of space. Also make sure you have the OS parameters set in such a way that it allows Informatica to create large cache files. Performance counters are used as a debugging tool while tuning the sessions. You can enable the collect performance data option in the properties tab as shown in the slide. The performance details are seen in the workflow monitor during the session run, or you can refer a .perf file in the location where session logs are written. Examine the counters to know input rows, error rows, duplicate rows, how many times the integration service access the disk or cache, and many more details. From memory settings perspective, we need to reduce the read from disk or write to disk counter value. Structural hardware changes are expensive. Using a simple guideline, sessions can be tuned to perform at their best. Tuning sessions can be labor intensive, even tedious, as the tuning process tends to repeat itself as time passes by. At each iteration, the largest bottleneck is removed, gradually improving the performance. Use auto settings where performance is not a matter of concern. The challenge is to identify the top N sessions which are long running or use more memory they need tuning. To achieve scalable server, you need to keep two important things in mind. Do not overkill memory. Do not allocate unnecessary memory for sessions. Schedule the sessions in such a way that it does not lead to resource exhaustion. Yes, we have come to the interesting part of the presentation, that is demo. I will show you the DTM buffer memory allocation and the cache size allocation for a session using the session log. We will see in what ratio the cache memory is divided among different cache transformations. We will learn how to enable the performance counters and their role in tuning the cache size. Each transformation cache is worth certain number of units, with each unit counting as a share of the total allocated memory. Lookup, aggregator, rank, joiner, index cache gets one unit of the memory share. The data cache of these transformations get two units of the share. Sorter gets eight units, and XML target gets 10 units. Let's go to the power center clients to see the mapping and the session attributes and their impact on memory values. I have created 
a sample mapping with multiple cache transformations. No, we are preparing for the demo, hence the no audio. Sure. I have created a sample mapping with multiple cache transformations. Joiner to lookups, sorter, and aggregator, and XML target. To run this mapping, I have created a session task in the workflow manager. Open the session, go to the mapping tab, click on the memory properties section. You will find all the memory attributes and their corresponding value. The DTM buffer size and the default block size are set to auto. The machine which hosts the power center server is having 7 GB RAM. The maximum memory allowed for auto memory properties is 512 MB, which is default, and I have assigned 100 for the maximum percentage allowed. This makes the integration service to choose a minimum of two, that is 512 MB, and divides this among all the cache transformations whose data cache size and index cache size are set to auto. In case you specify a numeric value for any of the other transformations, the total cache memory will be 512 MB plus the hard-coded numeric value. Click on the Properties tab. I have enabled the Collect Performance Data option to track the performance details during the session run. Now let's run the session with these settings. Let's see what the performance section has to say. It has different performance counters for various transformations. Let's look at the joiner counters. Along with the other counters, I can see joiner read from disk and joiner write to disk counters having certain counter values. These counter values correspond to how many times the integration service access the disk for reading and writing. This tells us that not all the joiner rows are processed in the memory. I have saved the session log in a notepad where my search becomes easy. I will search for the keyword cache size and find all the occurrences. I can see different cache sizes have been allocated for different cache transformations at session initialization. I have saved these values in a notepad. Lookup, lookup1, aggregator, joiner index cache gets 17 MB, which is one unit of the share. The data caches of these transformations get 35 MB, which is two units of the share. 
the sorter gets 143 MB, which is 8 units, and XML target gets 178 MB, which is nearly 10 units of the share. When you add up all these values, it comes around 512 MB. Analyzing the session log further, it tells us that if the data cache size of the joiner is set to 50 MB, then all the rows can be processed in memory. The joiner need not access the disk for processing. Let's hard code the value and see if there is any change in the counter. Again, click on the memory properties section in the mapping tab. Let's hard code 50 MB for the joiner data cache size. Save the changes and then run the session again. The session seems to be complete now. Let's look at the performance counters of the joiner again. We do not see joiner read from disk and write to disk counters now. This tells us that joiner has completed processing all its rows in the memory without accessing the disk. There is another way to tune the cache size of a joiner. I have used two sorters before the joiner where I sort data from two different sources. I have enabled the sorted input option for the joiner. I have run the session with joiner data cache size back to auto. When I search for the data cache size of the joiner, I can see 18 MB has been allocated, which is smaller compared to 35 MB assigned in the first case. Now let's see how much DTM buffer memory is allocated for the session. I will search for the keyword local buffer pool. And yes, this is the place where you see the total buffery memory, buffer memory allocated for the session. DTM buffer size is about 2 MB and buffer block size is about 65 KB. Please note that the DTM buffer values are independent of auto memory attributes. To see the impact of metadata, mapping metadata changes on the DTM buffer memory, I have copied the same mapping and created another mapping with a target of increased precision for various ports. Also, I have used multiple instances of this new target. After running the session, when I search for the total buffer pool, I can see an increase in the values. Now the DTM buffer size is around 5 MB and block size is 100 KB. Takeaways. The DTM buffer values are independent of auto memory attributes. Auto memory settings are only for cache memory. Tune the mapping logic using various methods thereby reducing more memory usage. You cannot optimize all the sessions. Identify top N sessions which are time consuming or more memory consuming and only try to tune them. Auto is not for performance tuning. Auto is not intelligent enough to assign memory based on the number of rows. Tune the sessions using manual memory allocations by looking at the session statistics. Not all the cache can be processed in the memory as there will be lot of cache transformations in multiple sessions running at the same time. Have an optimal cache directory and ensure enough disk space. Have a scalable application to handle the growing number of tasks 
in future. Okay, we are coming to the last segment of this presentation, which is Q&A. The lines are being open now. If you have any questions, please feel free to answer or post them in the chat window. Um, I will be unmuting the lines. I request you guys to please cooperate and ask questions one after the other. In the meantime, if you have questions, specific questions, please put in the chat and we'll be going to pick them first and answer. Presentation mode is now disabled. So oh, I think there is some voice issues. Just give a second. Okay. Uh, the, I have first question which I'm taken. Guys, um, I have Hello? a question uh, from the chat. Oh, uh, I am taking the questions first from the chat because I already have. Uh, two three questions in the chat, and I and then I'll take on the direct lines. Presentation okay. mode is now enabled. Uh, the first question is: um, the first question is, if my input file size is five GB plus, what do you suggest to use, auto or manual? The answer is? Uh, you have to use the manual uh, way of assigning the memory. Okay. Um, the next question is? If, if we enable um, collect performance data option, will it decrease the performance? You have to use the performance counters only while tuning the cache size. And there is a broader question, you know, it, it does not have a one-liner answer. It says, when and how to initiate the tuning session? Yes. You can uh, identify the top sessions which are uh, consuming more memory, and then you can tune them first in your development environment before moving into production. And uh, so the, uh, we will not be sharing the PPTs, but uh, the, the recording of this uh, presentation will be available on YouTube in next two days. You can access the presentation from there. OK, the next question is, what is the Cache calculator, and how do I access it? Uh, cache calculator is present in uh, uh, transformation properties. You have to uh, give inputs. Uh, if, if suppose, for example, if there is a lookup, you need to uh, give the input values with the unique rows, and then it will calculate the required cache for the transformation. I'm opening the line, but I request you guys to ask question one after the other. Presentation mode is now disabled. Okay, go ahead. First question. Hello, yes. Deepa. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, what What is the default DTM buffer size uh, when uh, when set to auto? What does integration service assign the DTM buffer size? Uh, buffer buffer size it is only the block size which is default which is 64 KB 
based on the number of blocks, yeah. it assumes the DTM buffer size. Okay, is it not uh, 12 MB uh, defaulted when it is set to auto? No, it's it's not 12 MB. Okay, because uh, if we reduce the DTM buffer size less than 12 MB, which uh, the session fails, is it the case? Yeah, but based on the buffer block size, the DTM size is calculated. It's the buffer block okay. size which comes into picture first. So based on how many such blocks are required, the integration service assumes the DTM buffer size. calculate the blocks. Okay. And then the blocks divide with the memory, and then the next question, please. Hello, Deepak. Go ahead and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question uh, regarding rank transformation. Uh, mm -hmm. According to the documentation, it was given that integration services stores group information in index cache and uh, raw data in the data cache. Okay. Right. But uh, while I was checking this in the, at the time of implementation, I identified that even though I am not using any group information, uh, it is using the index cache. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Deepa. Can you please repeat the question? Yeah, according to the documentation, it was given that uh, in uh, rank transformation, while we are using uh, group by port, then only it will use the index cache. But while doing in practice, before group by port also, it is, uh, I mean, integration services is uh, using index cache. So is there I'm, any, I'm I mean, not covering uh, each transformation cache in detail. Maybe you can just okay. write to us with your query. Uh, we will test it and then we can answer you back. Okay. Uh, can you give an idea on which I can post this question? No, you can post on our. Uh, no, you can post uh, using the uh, communities on our support portal, or you can open a, a case with us because okay. this Long does not have a one. Sorry. On December 20th, 2013, I posted the same question with multiple scenarios in my support. Oh, I mean, you mean to say on the communities or on as a on communities? Uh, yeah. Can you give me your uh, contact uh, email so that I can write back to you? You just type it on the chat. Yeah, sure. Uh, next uh, question, please. This is Samarth here. I have one question. Um, yeah, you said uh, the default uh, buffer block size will be 64 MB, but then uh, does it mean like 64 KB? Okay. So does it mean that more the buffer block size, better will be the performance of each session will be running? So that is the minimum it requires. If you if you are okay. uh, if you are passing a multibyte character, I mean if you, if your row size is large, then definitely the block size will increase. Okay, so even if the minimum uh, watch, uh, as I, yeah. If you have always work rate for hundred rows, the optimum okay, block so so even if it is set to a 64 KB, uh, if the uh, row size is more, it will increase to whatever it, it size the increase. row size is. Yes, yes. Okay. It's the largest, so, uh, whether the largest size of your row or it is 64, whichever is larger. Okay. So if we increase the default buffer block size to say 100 KB instead of the 64 KB, then more number of rows will be processed per block. That's what you said, right? Yes. So what is the maximum uh, default buffer block size we can set to so that the performance would be maximum? So we recommend uh, the DTM buffer size to be set to maximum of 1 GB. So accordingly, you can calculate block size and set it. Okay. 
on how many blocks you may need when you are tuning. Okay, maybe one tenth of the ATM buffer size. Yes. Is that what you recommend? Yeah, I mean yes. that would be the starting point. But you can tune so for like if you are using CDC sources, then it's better to have less block size, or lesser block size than bigger block. So there are different ways of tuning it, but you st you start with one tenth of it and then start tuning it. Okay, so the basic. Uh, Idea no. here is more the buffer block size, better will be the performance. Am I right Sorry? on that? The um, more? more the buffer block size, better will be the performance of the session. Hello. Is that true? Because more number of records can be processed yes. per block. Hello. Hey, can you please repeat the question? So, um, what what do you mean to say here is more the buffer block size, more number of records can be processed per block, and okay. better will be the performance. Uh, since there is an audio issue, just wait for a few a few seconds. Okay. So hi, can you hear us now? Yeah, I'm able to hear. <coughs> yeah, go ahead and repeat your question. Okay, so okay. Uh, what do you mean to say is more the buffer block size, more number of records can be processed per block, and better will be the performance of the session, correct? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, may not be every time. If you are processing more more rows, and if you have more number of buffer blocks, only then it may I mean, each okay. of the input and each of the sources targets the transformation to use the buffer block. Right? Now, let's just say if you have, uh, you know, one buffer block which is huge size, I mean, all the buffer blocks are of huge size, one of the transformations are holding it, then your reader will have to wait for your buffer blocks, right? So you'll have to okay. tune it. There's a trade off between number of buffer blocks available and the size of the buffer block. So we'll have to tune it in such a way that you know none of your transformations will have to wait for the buffer blocks till others release it. So if you give a huge buffer block, that the target may still trying to push it to the target. I mean the uh, writer thread may still try to push it to the target, and the other threads may still have to wait for buffer blocks. If you have the smaller ones, it may try to push it in chunks, right? Smaller chunks. Okay, so if there is no the hard and fast rule, will... but you'll have to tune it accordingly. Okay. So, is there any uh, thinking behind uh, when you said the DTM buffer size can be maximum 1 GB? No, no. Uh, the maximum is not 1 GB, but we recommend it at 1 GB at the maximum. It should not ideally take much more than that. Okay. I mean, depending, okay. again, it depends on the size of your data, but uh, the optimal value we suggest is 1 GB. Okay, say the data files are like 5 GB, but still the buffer block, uh, buffer size is enough if it is 1 GB. That is what you mean. I mean, all the 5 GB will not be read in one shot, right? Correct. All right, thank you very much. Next question. Yeah, we have uh, a flaw issue. Uh, is there any thumb rule if we have a flaw in the source or the target uh, table? Uh, any thumb rule which we need to follow for fine, for fine tuning. We have currently an SR with Informatica following on it, but we just want to know if there's any thumb rule which we need to follow. So if you have an SR, I I prefer let's you know, deal with an SR. Um, you know, I will definitely, uh, I'm sure the our engineer will definitely answer that. Okay, thanks. I mean, there is no, I, having said that there is no standard thumb rule that we go by, because as Sargi just explained, it will be a scenario based with uh, you know multiple uh, uh, factors coming into the uh, picture. So there is no thumb rule for anything here. Okay, because we have flaw with the Unicode integration service, so we are getting a throughput of like five to seven rows per second. So I just want to know if there is a thumb rule which we need to follow. Because uh, I mean the thing is there should be at least the buffer block should at least be able to hold one row. It cannot hold you know, less than a row. So based on that, we'll have to tune it. I mean, the log size may be huge, right? Okay. Thank you. Next question, please.
uh, what can be the maximum uh, memory allowed for the auto memory attributes what can be the maximum percentage of memory in ideal case now i mean if you are setting the value the the editor will set allow you to set to 100% but again you will have to see how i mean there's no uh, you know hard rule to say this is optimal right but it will allow you to set 100% Uh, okay, but practically it should be. I mean, it depends on a session, right? It's on a case by case. For a small session that's reading from a platform writing to a small target, you know, setting it to 10 GB or 100 GB would not make any sense. Right? So it depends on the complexity of the mapping and the size of data you're moving. And uh, if you make it 100%, the other jobs will have no memory. Uh, okay, another thing is that that maximum memory allowed for the auto memory attribute. that also we can mention like 512 or 1024 right what is the maximum amount you can mention there that's an absolute value uh, there are two um, parameters right one is the value yes. where you can assign and the other is a percentage and whichever is lesser okay. is always considered for the cache memory okay. calculation that is only a yeah, string okay. validation so you can give the string that is any string that is accepted in you know in the format that it takes Okay. Uh, okay, ma'am. One simple one question means there are if there are records like seventy millions of records are there. Ideally, means practically means I'm not just uh, it can what percentage we can set around. It can be can we set around fifty percent of the maximum memory? Because when the means in my case when the load runs that uh, that time we can hold the other thing. you can set it but what is the is, um, again available memory on your system uh, okay okay ma'am okay i need to check that also right yes okay thanks ma'am next question please last two questions hey uh, this is any was your uh, uh, unused to go straight for right hello Uh, going to see what can you tell us whether the total physical memory percentage is that a total memory on the box or is that the total available memory on the box at the point when the session runs yeah uh, it's the physical memory which is available on the system Uh, any more question uh i need it so did hello go ahead yeah. sir yeah uh, i have a scenario like for example in my in my uh, there is a simple mapping and there is no uh, look up or journal or any caching so in that uh, scenario for example my it is very late so is it that ideal scenario where i can go and change the default buffer block or buffer size so please repeat the question vishwajit can you please repeat the question yeah for example in my mapping there is no cache used means there is no lookup joiner or sorter so in that case for example my throughput is very high uh, so throughput is very late so is it the right scenario where i can go the uh, go and change the buffer block size yeah if you have if you do not have any cache transformation then the uh, memory allowed uh, the percentage and the uh, absolute value will not come into picture it's only the dtm uh, buffer values which you need to modify okay so i have to go and increase the buffer memory Yeah, depending on the session log statistics, you check the statistics and then based on that you tune. Okay, okay, thanks. Hey, this is Shreena uh, here, and uh, I just wanted to know: can we able to dynamically uh, change the uh, size of the blocks that which you have mentioned? No, no question. Ah. 
I mean, after the session starts, dynamically change the block size. Uh, uh, I don't think in so. Session, it's possible. Uh, uh, in one session, I may get hundred records. On the second day, I may get a uh, million records. So I just wanted to uh, see. I know that the records are coming to be in hundreds. The, the second day, it will be in the millions. So. Uh, other than touching the mapping or session, do you have a luxury to go somewhere and uh, change in such a way that uh, these components accordingly as what you have recommended? Okay, can, can you clarify whether you are mentioning about the source records here or the lookup side or is there any specific uh, thing, detail in your mind? No, 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 it's, it's, it's target. My target is going to get loaded with such uh, uh, records. No, okay. The, to summarize your question, you are asking, mm -hmm. can we change the uh, uh, memory settings dynamically at the uh, at the runtime? Yeah. No, at this point, yes. no. And uh, Informatica is eventually will reach there, maybe in the uh, in, in our Chenda two or mm -hmm. and or next. But at this point, no. Okay. Also, you have mentioned about. Uh, uh, to avoid unused port, right? So I was wondering, will there be any performance issue uh, in having unused port uh, in a passive transformation would result in a performance degradation? Not for the passive transformation. Well, to, to be to elaborate on that, for example, uh, let's take a simple example here, like a lookup transformation we would be catching the data. So having uh, unnecessary ports included in a lookup transformation would, of course, increase the network traffic or whatever data involved, and hence it would be... I meant as is not active. I can understand the reason why we should not have unused port in an active, but will there be any performance degradation in passive transformations? Are you asking for a, a lookup transformation? Any cache at all? No. Expression transformation do not use cache at all. No. Okay. Uh, so in that case, uh, if I have any unused port, will that too result in a performance degradation? No, it's no. only for the connected ports. If it is not connected, it will not affect the source. The port is not connected upstream or downstream. It doesn't matter if the source is connected or unconnected. I mean, look up or something, but uh, will there be any performance degradation if I have a port in an expression that I am not using it? Will that result in a performance degradation? Okay, uh, so the expression transformation would not involve any caches for its processing. So having extra ports there would not involve any extra memory. It might involve a marginal processing uh, of CPU or uh, uh, underlying memory involved uh, because of the extra expressions involved. No no caches involved. No caches or memory, extra memory required. Yeah, that's the answer. Matter, we have unused ports, not in transmissions, right? No, no, passive is a very generic word. Uh, let's use the expression here. Lookup is also passive, and it would involve caches. So passive would be a wrong word to use here. No, no. Um, no lookup can be used both active as well as passive, right? So if I am going to use my lookup as a passive, not an active, in that case, I can uh, uh, have the unused books, right? Uh, I think we can summarize it by saying that... Uh, well, a, a generic statement cannot be made uh, based on the active or passive part of the transformation. I think it's better to say that uh, there are the transformations which involve cache would, would use the memory instead. Okay. So anything that uses uh, cache uh, and having unused port will result in uh, performance degradation. Am I right? Yes. Okay. okay. One last question, guys. Okay, I, I assume that we do not have any more questions. And thank you so much for your participation today. Uh, as I told in the beginning,
this webinar will be available on the YouTube in next two days. Uh, please search with, uh, please search with the you know, uh, taglines like uh, memory settings for optimization plus Informatica. You should be able to get that. Please fill the survey. And uh, Informatica uh, customer support will have a similar webinar on every last Thursday of the every month. And I request you all to uh, use that opportunity to join this and get gain the knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Deepa. Really appreciate your Thank time you. and effort. Thank you.